and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It is the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because of the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. But servants, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. This is work ethics. So, even if you're working in the bank, you're supposed to observe this. Anywhere you work, you're supposed to do it. Some members of that organization go to the back to gossip about the boss. You should never be involved in it. Now, I'm showing you this because this is what all the brethren should be taught. That's how they are supposed to work. And then they become the most valuable staffs in any organization where they work. They had the group that never more, more about work. Like we read in the parable of the talents, that the reward for good work is more work. Whenever they tell you well done, it means more responsibilities are going to come. That's what they call promotion. If you are in charge over 10 talents, they move you over 10 cities. So some people think promotion means increase in benefit. It means increase in responsibility. But with the increase in responsibility comes certain other additional allowances. Okay. With deep respect and fear. You know King James said with fear and trembling. Those things that they will say. That's how you are to deal with your pastor. That's how you are to deal. You have to be careful. If your own psychology reduces authority, you downplay it. You pu push it to the level in your own understanding to where you can take it lightly. And I'm not just talking about authority in, the, in church. I'm talking about even the workplace. You have to have deep respect for your boss. You have to have it for your husband. Children have to have it for their parents. You have to have it for your pastor. Serve them sincerely as you will serve Christ. This is another very important element about work ethics in the kingdom. That work is ministry. Say it. Work is ministry. Say it. Work is ministry. Don't say I'm answering phone call. That thing is ministry. The way you handle that thing is how God assesses your usefulness, how useful you can be for him in the kingdom. That's why God's method is that you should be first put under tutors and governors before he commits something serious in the kingdom. The way he said is, you should be put over another man's thing before he put, he put something in your hand. You should be put over unrighteous mama before he gives you true riches like anointing, like all this other stuff. That's why there are some of you who have laid hands on 200 times. Nothing is coming on your head. It's unfaithfulness. It's lack of kingdom work ethics. No ministry gets anywhere until they get these things corrected. No ministry. Because the same way God deals with individuals, that's how he deals with ministries. Certain things God will not commit, no matter how much you pray. You've heard me say, God does not give you what you ask for. He gives you what you can manage or what you can handle. So he checks your ability to manage and handle things. He checks your faithfulness before he commits things. So everybody's promotion is proportional to this his, his faithfulness is still worship. So the Bible teaches constantly that work is ministry. Don't go out there and disconnect your Sunday life from your Monday to Friday life and think you are in another world where maybe what you are taught in church does not apply. It's the same thing. If this applies to people who are in the secular world, how much more for somebody who said he's working in church? Who is actually working for Christ? He's telling the secular world, serve Adenuga as if Adenuga is Christ. Serve Dan Gote as if he's Christ. When you go to work for anybody who pays you, 
put in the best there is as if Jesus is the one that owns the company. What about church that Jesus now owns? Verse 6. Try to please them all the time. Not some of the time. Try to please them all the time. Not just when they are watching you. King James who said, the ones that do that are men pleasers. That's eye service. Not with eye service. I read it in Proverbs. Go to the end, O slogan. Who have no captain, no boss, but they do what they have to do. That's doing what is right all the time, even when you are not being supervised. Anybody who works in any out out there in the corporate world knows that this is the key to promotion. This is the key to keep rising. Start creating headache for your boss. You know you are creating a nightmare for yourself. Try to please them at all times, all the time, not just when they are watching. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. Work is ministry. Work is worship. Worship is not just coming to church to leave hands. No. When a man rises up early, he has started worship. And actually, when, when he honors, you see like that guy that gets to work early and says, Father, I thank you. Today, other myself has more worship in his life than that guy that has been singing for one hour. You see, this, these are the reasons God promoted Joseph. These are the reasons that God promoted Daniel. It's this thing. These are the reasons that God used Nehemiah. The people you have that are working, if you want Daniels and Josephs and Nehemiahs to come out of them, they have to be taught the kingdom. They have to be taught God's work ethics. He said, Joseph will not tamper with anything that's committed into his hands. He was so faithful that his master didn't take account anymore because he knew this guy. No. If he tell you that the money is this, that's what it will be. How much more you that manage God's house and God's vineyard? God does not play with still worship. God does not play with still worship. If you take what is wrong, go back and pay it. It will ruin you and it will ruin the children that will come out of your loin. Go back and pay it. I don't care you swallowed it. Go and form it and pay it back. It will ruin your life. And it will send you to hell. That's why Judas is roasting under there. When the others are going to be ruling, Matthias are taking his place. Look at ordinary people. They, they rob God according to them. Not we go, no. Just that they kept there. He said, you are cursed with a curse. How, how, how can God do that? But that's what exactly happened. And how much more you? Now it's his own money. How dare you? Those two songs of Eli in the Bible, what did this thing do to them? God said, they died in one day. And he said, I will do a thing. And when anybody here hears it, all the ear that hears it will tingle. In one day, all of them, they were even carrying the ark. He disarmed them there, collected the ark from them, and killed them on top of it. Judas, the cause, they said, he will never lift from his generation, not only his direct children, his generation. The other person that did it, he was an apprentice prophet, Gehazi. The cause too, they said, every descendant of his was going to be Okay, Eli's children that did it, the course again said that there will be nobody that will come out of their lineage that will be able to stand stress, pissing on the wall. So a male child, there will be, it will be, he said, it will be someone that has one, if they are at all survived to be male, they will have one infirmity or one thing. I've warned you now, the word is enough for the wise. Uh, if you have sense, if you have the fear of God. 
this one of those things they call pitfalls of ministry pitfalls you know like you look at something it looks like land you are passing it looks like ground but you don't know it's a pit they dug and covered the surface so you just Wah! these are the landmines in ministry landmines and one leg is gone they have to carry the guy to hospital and put it these are landmines they are very dangerous issues issues about authority is another very that is like this one because sometimes it looks so simple in the surface people go and carry their hands and put there as slaves of christ do the will of god from the heart think about what we need to teach our secular people you want them to prosper teach them work ethics when they are downsizing they will say no 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 not this guy yeah he comes to work before everybody he goes no this guy anything you give him he does it oh no 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 he said but that one lazy they even come from the same church or is it that one too is born again you only come here and be reading bible and be praying do his work you can't give anything in his hand and, and have rest he's always complaining excuses verse 7 walk with enthusiasm have you seen that one as though you were working for the lord rather than for people you know how it is when it's worship time walk is worship you know how it is when it is things that relate with ministry work is ministry everybody's not going to come into full-time ministry what jesus wants is for them to take the sword to where they walk take the kingdom of god to where they walk and permeate the place with the culture the values the attitude of the kingdom you see walk with enthusiasm as if you are doing it for the lord and not for people verse 8 remember that the lord will reward each one of us for the good we do whether we are slaves or free i like how king james puts it knowing that whatever good you do whatever good thing you do the same you shall receive of the lord whether you are born or free that's whether you are the one that owns the company or the one that is working in it Colossians chapter 3 from verse 22 servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as men pleasers but in singleness of heart fearing God verse 23 whatever you do do it heartily do it with all your heart as to the Lord and not unto men verse 24 knowing that of the lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the lord christ walk is ministry walk is ministry if joseph did not manage potiphar's house well no if you like see all the visions in the world that prime minister thing would not have happened that was god paying joseph for faithful service your destiny is tied to what you are doing now while you are serving your destiny is tied to what you how you're handling what is committed to your hand your future is tied to it some people will never go beyond what they are now because of their own attitude to work for you serve the lord christ verse 25 or, or chapter 4 verse 1 yeah but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done for there is no respect of person have you seen it and somebody that is cheating in the workplace means thinks he's cheating his boss or cheating whatever but he's actually robbing himself because when the lord wants to promote he checks out on these things i hope you know companies wise companies when they want to employ you they check out your resume kind of testimonials you had from where you work last how many years you've been working what and what you were doing that's how god operates to oh, these are marketplace principles that they've collected from the scripture even if you're being moved coming to a new company they check your faithfulness in your former company if the report shows that you left that place because of crisis you left because you were sacked because money was missing in your department the next place knows that this guy is not coming in 
the report shows that you were the one causing trouble the last place you worked. They know that you are not the right person to hire. No matter how much skill you have. Whatever good you do, Ephesians 6, 8, you receive. But whatever wrong to you do, you will be paid back. The same Jesus Christ. The same Jesus Christ. The question now, if, if God expects people who work for unbelievers, who work for, to really observe this, what do you think he expects from those who work in the kingdom? What do you think? Joseph was working for a potiphar. Nehemiah was working for a hidden king, a Persian king. Daniel was working for a Nebuchadnezzar. And God, and he said, he said, this man showed so much faithfulness. God promoted them to the highest height there was. First Timothy chapter 6, look at verse 1. This is another problem we have. These are the problems we have. Two groups. When they work for their fellow brothers and sisters, or when they work in the church, or work in the ministry, they assume that is a place to toil away, waste away their lives. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own master worthy of what? Or honor. In all the workplace teachings, they talk about how you relate with authority. Then they talk about how you relate with your assignments. Then they always teach that you should know that whatever you are doing, God is God. Do it as if it's God you are doing it for. They should count their masters as worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. In other words, how a Christian works is how he preaches in his workplace. A Christian that comes late, that's always lazy, and around, the one that is always gossiping in the office, has no right to preach to anybody in that place. Because it's a bad testimony of Christianity. You see that the name of God and his doctrine, the gospel, be not blasphemed. There are certain things people do. People don't want to hear about that church or hear about that Jesus' name or whatever you're preaching. Verse 2. And they that have believing masters. Okay, he has dealt with those who have unbelieving masters. Masters anywhere. Count the word of all honor. All honor. All honor. All honor. The way you talk about your boss says a lot about the type of Christian you are. The way you talk about anybody that is over you says a lot about whether you know God or not. Now, those who have believing masters, this is the problem we have here. And they are tackling it here. Let them not despise them because they are brethren. But rather, let them do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit these things teach and is hot. Find me another translation of that. If the masters are believers, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. Have you seen? Those slaves should work all the harder. Have you seen? It should work even harder because their efforts are helping other believers who are well beloved. Teach these things, Timothy, and encourage everyone to obey them. Titus chapter 2, verse 9. Slaves must always obey their masters and do their best to please them. They must not talk back. Look, are you, I don't know which Christianity we are practicing. Listen. Verse 10. They must not talk back. They must not steal. But must show themselves to be entirely trustworthy and good. Then they will make the teachings about God our Savior attractive in every way. This is how to win your workplace. The way to win your colleagues. Like this corporate world now. 
the way to win the others. This is it. Check verse 11. I think this is where what I'm looking for ended. But, you know, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. Yeah, but the way to take it to those people, this is the way to do it. Now, one time I was asked, what if your guy is harsh? You know, the other guy say you are a hard man. What if you have a hard man or whatever, you know, as your boss? Somebody said, what if he doesn't like me? Does this thing sound like like or sentiment? Does it look like love? We're teaching principles. We're not teaching like. We're not teaching sentiment. And are we teaching emotion? Does this sound sentimental? These are principles. Which, if a person operates over time, you will create goodwill. People will just love you. There is just something about it. There's no way a person can be that respectful. A person protects his or gas secrets and or whatever behind the back. A person is hardworking. Where that boss finally? You know, I know there is company politics where people are doing eye service, trying to, you know, but there is something about the truth. It's it just for a while it will come up. After a while, it will be known. Was it eye service that helped Joseph? Was it eye service that helped Daniel? First Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Maybe we should even take it from verse 17. This is a good attitude that everyone should take to work. I don't know who was talking to us and said one company has respect for all. Look at it there. This workplace ethics. Respect for all. Respect for all. Now, that's where to begin practicing it. Because when you start practicing it, it won't be hard when you get to authority. When it gets to authority. Why do you, do you think the scripture said don't talk back? Because people that are over you have right to rebook you. They can harass you. Now your work is not well done. Don't bring this kind of thing. They have right to hold you accountable. Respect for all. Respect for all. And you see such people, they win the favor of their colleagues. And when they start, you tell them, I want you to come to my church. Who, who don't want to go? Who don't want to go? Respect everyone. Love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God. Respect the king. Now, look at respect for all, all your colleagues. When you brethren, love the brethren. You should go beyond respect. You should respect them. You should have commitment towards them. You see? Then, fear God. Fear God. Then, reverence the king. That's find who is in authority and reverence him. This is Christianity of the Bible. This is what the early church used to teach. Verse 18. You who are servants must accept the authority of your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are cruel. So, he said, your guy is, is hard man. Look at that. Your guy is a hard man. Look at that one. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are cruel. Read it for me in King James. I want you to see. One translation even said if they are harsh. Servant, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle. Ah, you don't know my boss. He's very kind and gentle, but also to the fraud. Find me one more translation. Ethics are principles. They are not sentiments. They are not emotional there are principles and uh, pe people who observe that will rise to the highest position wherever they work household slaves submit yourself to your masters with all respect not only to the good and gentle but also to the cruel it's not necessarily household but he applies to 
anybody that is in any position to render service, whether it's in government, whether it's in workplace, whether it's at home. And if you have people who work in the house, they should also be taught that. The spirit of democracy and the spirit of lawlessness is everywhere. This is Christianity. This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God. And you will have peace. You will have peace. You will prosper. You will prosper. You can't talk about work and not talk about authority. Because somebody should hold you accountable for doing what you are supposed to do. You can't talk about work and not talk about the attitude to work. That's how God addresses these things. The hand of the diligent shall be a rule. A man that is diligent will end up a leader. Say that a man diligent in his business, he will stand not with mean men, he will stand with kings. But the opposite creates poverty. And the other day I was reading it, he said that man will remain in servitude all his life. He will remain in bondage. The slothful. The slothful. You remember the parable I gave of the eleventh hour? That's Matthew chapter twenty. Just one word in it before we close. I just want to leave this word behind before we close. The parable is about a man who went out early in the morning to hire laborers who will help him who will work in his vineyard. Okay. Go down to when he picked out the guys at the 11th hour. About the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing like do and said to them, why stand ye here all day I do? Now, look at verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle where? Uh, I, I just wanted that one word, the marketplace, is what. Why don't you try it in NIV? I want to see how he converted it. What he converted it to. Is it labor? What do you call them? That place where people. Then at nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. Now that's the point I wanted to see. Can you take note of that? That's what I want to say. Where God gets his laborers from. He doesn't get them from school. He gets them from the marketplace. Where Jesus went into ministry from is from the marketplace. Where Paul went into ministry from is from the marketplace. Peter went into ministry from the marketplace. John went into ministry from the marketplace. Levi went into ministry from the marketplace. Now, what you will find out is that some of these basics that I'm trying to teach now will not be a hard thing for you if you have had two years, three years of exposure to the marketplace. It's good. This, this is one side that many of you have missed out. And if we let you grow like that, you're going to be in mess. God can't do anything serious with you. He can't. He prefers to drag a professor that he knows that stays till 1 a.m. writing reports, doing his thesis, doing research. He has to make sure that the exam results are ready. He has to make sure his lecture notes are ready. That wakes up early because he has to reverse the course. He has to teach by 8. And he has to reverse it and go all that. He prefers because he knows that the man already has a discipline, a culture. That has become a part of his life. To work with that kind of person. It's not every day God will be telling him about prayer life. He already has a culture of waking up early. What he's just going to do is replace what he's doing with another thing. But that routine. You prefer to pick a manager that has already. Whether he's dragging him into full time or part time. Where God gets all his men is in the marketplace. Elisha was in the farm. We were playing with 12 yokes of oxen. 
say a hard walking a cast a mantle on him where he gets them where he got peter was a fisherman fishing and the, the bible said that day they did vigil then he gave him a boat sinking and neck breaking miracle of fish, and then called him in where did he get mad to government revenue office people who collect tax where did he get um, thomas that one was an activist that wants to get the government to behave he gets a, a hard-working person a disciplined man and now tells the man come over and become a fisher of men god does not have use for lazy people he detests them he hates it don't have use for them cast that slothful servant into outer darkness cast that slothful servant take what he has and give to somebody that is useful cast that slothful servant into outer darkness now to, what you guys call it is sack sack the person send him back to the job market let him go and cast him into outer darkness if anyone will not walk let him not eat this is god the kingdom is not sentimental the kingdom is principled is governed by principles kingdom is not sentimental the kingdom is principled the kingdom is not sentimental the kingdom is principled but once he has become your culture it's now your lifestyle it's now you are you now you enter another level of life enter another level of life so adjustments and you know you're going to teach work ethics in the church if the brethren will succeed all the prophecies you are releasing on them will not produce anything we are in the kingdom of god you can't cheat that system he has a system it will not produce anything till they are taught work work was not part of the fall work was there before the fall they are taught how to work and they learn to rise up early sunday the guy is waking up by nine you have to correct those things in the people you have to attack it you have to attack it and this is a guy that has work on monday he has to be in his office by eight he has to leave his house by five he needs to wake up 6 a.m to go to church wake up five seven you are in service nine o'clock you are, go home and rest 5 p.m go for cell meeting because it's that day that he should be able to find extra time to sleep when he returns back from church he should be able to get two extra hours to add to the normal time he sleeps in the night and then he's ready for a new week you see him 10 o'clock he's walking inside church there are teachings that produces godly living that is ungodliness that's ungodliness that's like satan walking to and fro walk is ministry walk is worship walk is worship so a man that is diligent in work is diligent spiritually Kenny Hagen said when i walk into a person's office or walk into a person's house i can tell whether the person is spiritually organized or not see the whole room scattered see the bed everywhere scattered that person's spiritual life is like that if, if the earlier you make this connection for the people the better it's like their money check how you deal with your money you see how your spiritual life is teach people if they can analyze their work they can see how their spiritual work is if you can study your work habit you will see when you are spiritually lazy you will see it you will be physically lazy when you start becoming unfaithful to god you see you start mismanaging your time when you start becoming idle you have started becoming sinful i even found that the amount of time satan has to use you to tempt you is highly eliminated by being gamefully employed being busy i do man is satan's workshop that's when your mind gets into all sorts of things drift where you shouldn't drift to 
That's when people get busy body women. Then that's when they now sit around and gossip and be discussing what they should not be doing. New Testament is strong about these things. Get the work ethics, this culture, reorganizing your church. That church will prosper. You will see. Get the finance in order. That God will pour his blessings there. Get this issue about work in order. At the proper time, we now go to management. But work and money, get it in order. You will see things turn around. God will start multiplying. God will start blessing. Because those are the things that he looks for. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all that we have heard and learned today. I ask for grace to now function in this truth. To live it. And now to turn these success principles into habits. Into our normal routine. That it becomes a way of life. Not something anyone here is struggling to do. I thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are working with us to see that there is proper transition in everybody's life. And I thank you because you are making all things well. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Cause this whole week to go well. Everything we set our hands to do to prosper. That there will be productivity in every area in ministry, in finances, in every area, in church growth, that your name be glorified. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Ogweli. Email address dominionimagemedia at yahoo.com or call 01-792-6879 0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900